The COVID-19 pandemic has completely disrupted the way we work. It's been a radical shift occurring almost overnight, with millions of us deserting offices to work from home. And that shift has been powered by technology. Last year, the average domestic broadband speed was more than 12 times faster than in our homes a decade ago. It's meant large numbers of us will never go back to working as we did before. We certainly don't want to. According to one survey, post-pandemic workers want to mix, spending half the week in the office and half at home. No wonder companies are thinking hard about what to do with office space, remodeling and downsizing to embrace the new flexibility, and save billions in rent that would otherwise be spent on empty desks. That will have a profound effect on cities themselves as office space gets scaled back and perhaps we have rezoning, perhaps more residential in the centre of cities than we've seen for a long time. It'll also have a profound effect on the rest of the country as wealth and talent begins to become decentralised from urban centres and workers can begin longer commutes for those two, three days they're coming into the office. And that could be a huge factor in the government's levelling up agenda. As employees become less tied to their workplaces, another revolution looms in transport. For centuries, the way we get to and from work has shaped cities. The daily commute has put a premium on proximity and seen us spread to the suburbs. But if we don't have to be in the office every day, we can live even further away. Cities themselves are likely to become filled with smart automated vehicles connected to each other and to city infrastructure to ease traffic. The renaissance of the humble bicycle, clean and good for you, will continue, while in the skies the first robo-taxis will be buzzing about. Things like driverless cars and even the electric scooters and electric bicycles we see all around us already are really disrupting transport as we go. And what that probably means is that we'll ultimately need a blend of options. And what a blend of option leads to is a change in the ownership model. Think less paying 20 grand every 10 years for a new car and perhaps a Netflix subscription model where what's called mobility as a service allows you to access what you need when you need it. That might be the big new thing. Meanwhile, VR and AR are two technologies that are transitioning from gimmick status into significant work tools. Companies like Volkswagen are already using VR to train designers and engineers in virtual workshops. Technology on the newest phones allows virtual objects to be positioned in a physical space. It's easy to imagine that in a decade we'll be having parties or business meetings with participants' avatars beaming in from all over the world. No wonder that AR glasses, which can overlay such digital projections onto the world around us, are the next big thing expected from Apple and Facebook. Dramatic as that might sound, the greatest change to our working lives in 2030 will come from automation. McKinsey believes that up to 400 million workers worldwide could be supplanted by 2030 with the continued adoption of automation. From drivers to jet pilots, from PAs to radiographers, a host of professions skilled and unskilled, white collar and blue, risk sliding into the past. But it's by no means all doom and gloom. Professions which rely on uniquely human skills like empathy and adaptability will flourish. Embracing technology and automation is clearly key to the new economy. But what if it displaces huge numbers of workers or even puts them out of work altogether? That is the key conundrum. There's not a huge answer at the moment. All we can do is take comfort in the fact that in previous industrial revolutions, that new technology has always created more jobs than it's disrupted. Ultimately, technology is a positive. It opens opportunities. We can't necessarily see how it's going to do it, but it always has done in the past. And there's no reason to believe that this time should be any different. <laughs>